This is a story like lots of other stories. This is the story of a family, the story of a passion. It is about love, love for a land and its scents, love for its rhythms and seasons, a story of tradition but also of changes. It is the early post-war period when a man named Romano Pittaro decides to improve the art of vine and wine making. He is a self-made man and self-taught also. With obstinacy and resolution, he learns a trade that is new to him, but that looks tailored on him too, adding his new experiences and intuition to his studies, step by step. He combines what he learns from books with his observations on nature, the land, and alchemy to create a new road of his own, personal and unrepeatable. This story is like time, that goes by slowly and, through its slowness, makes people evolve while changing actions into traditions. We are in the 60s and time begins to run fast. It is the turn of the second generation that considers the teachings of the founder as a fecund base to start from and to which a new chapter of the story can be added, the chapter of technology. Technology analyzes, improves, and codifies the creations of previous experiences. It is in this context, amidst the past and the future, that, in 1968, the modern Pitaro winery comes to life. The two Pitaros, brothers Angelo and Pietro, while challenging their father's ideas, start off with a new project that blends tradition, research and technology. Nowadays, Cantina San Martino is run by Angelo's sons, called the Pitas. This winery brings important figures to the table, a property extending over 125 hectares, 308 acres, hundred of which are dedicated to vineyards in the heart of Friuli's Grave. Each hectare has a density of 5,000 vines. Every vine produces from 2 to 2.5 kilos of grapes. It's a small quantity, but that is how you ensure a higher quality. While the workers of the cantina do the dry pruning by hand, all the other production stages are mechanized, including wine harvesting. 25,000 quintals of grapes guarantee the production of 20,000 hectolitres of wine. The origin of Friuli's Grave area dates back to 35 million years ago. The soil is gravelly and dry. There are lots of stones as far as hundreds of metres deep down. This dry and barren soil is perfect for vine cultivation and the Grave dock area is the most fruitful in the region. The average yearly wine production stands at 380,000 hectolitres, which account for 55% of the total production of all of Friuli's dock zones put together. A few decades ago, extraordinary white wines began to flank the production of red wines. The story of Cantina San Martino started and developed between the provinces of Udine and Pordenone. Making wine. This art has five golden rules. First, healthy, mellow grapes. Second, vintage and squeezing must be soft. Third, pressing must be delicate. Fourth, careful cleaning of the must. Fifth, selected yeasts and controlled fermentation temperatures at 90 centigrade. But, above all, you have to ensure utmost cleanliness to all your equipment. Grapes are harvested as gently as possible. You can do that also with the mechanical harvest. And are then sent to the winery promptly. They are unloaded into the hopper and then shoved into the destemmer press. Must 
squeezed skins and seeds coming from white grapes are cooled at from 12 to 14 degrees centigrade and introduced into presses. The ones that Cantina San Martino uses are of the vacuum packed type. These presses squeeze the mark softly and separate it from the must. On the other hand, if must, squeezed skins and seeds are of red grapes, they go to the winemaking machines. During fermentation and after a lot of reassemblages, the color of the skins tints the wine. Reassemblage is an operation carried out with winemaking machines, whose purpose is to keep blending the must. During this stage, the must is taken from the bottom of the winemaking machines and carried to the top. Vinification in white. Coming from presses, the must becomes bright through decantation. Then, the enologist inoculates selected yeasts into the must to obtain perfect fermentation, kept at a constant temperature of 19 degrees centigrade. At Cantina San Martino, to cool the mass that is fermenting in stainless steel basins, water is poured along their walls to cut the temperature, when too high. At the end of fermentation, after about 10 to 12 days, the wine is cleaned by means of centrifugation and filtering. It is then cooled down to stabilize it from a physical point of view so that it can be bottled and, eventually, sold. Vinification in red. The red grapes are separated from their stems, squeezed and put into wine-making machines, where the must is in contact with skins and seeds, to extract their colour and tannins. The enologist inoculates selected yeasts, then the must and the skins ferment for about five to eight days. Once fermentation is completed, the mark is squeezed. The wine is filtered and cooled down so that it stabilizes. After this process, it can be bottled and sold. The following are the jewels of the cantina. White wines, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Bianco, Tokai Friulano, Traminer, and Sauvignon. Red wines, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Refosco dal Peduncolo Rosso, sweet wines, Verduzzo Friulano, Ramandolo, and Angelo, a new raisin wine made with Verduzzo and Piccolit grapes. The future of this winery is named Ecology, a further new step ahead to complete the blending of tradition, technology, and respect for the environment. Ecology and biohouse building are the key words. A new structure that is in harmony with nature to enrich it without exploiting it. With this new project, our cantina looks back at its 40 years of life and, at the same time, gazes at its future. The focus is the construction of new premises for the company and a new wine retail store. This wonderful bio building is immersed amidst the green of a beautiful Merlot vineyard. That is how the ancient mansion began its new life. Now it is getting ready to welcome to its comfortable and equipped bed and breakfast facility visitors wishing to discover the ancient and noble art of winemaking. That is how the story of one man became the story of a family. And now, there is the fourth generation that is already knocking on the door. The future is coming. <laughs>